All right, now I'd like to talk about a really cool feature called open type fonts. So um, we, uh, we never really do this. We actually have to make our own open type fonts. But open type fonts are fonts that the designers have created with molt, like a number of different Um, click on click on the text tool right here, and let's look at our fonts. I'm going to just hit the drop down, and you'll notice that some of these fonts, as we scroll down, they have this O, and then some of them have these this TT kind of thing. Well, the TT is sort of like the traditional type of font. It's called a true type font, uh, but the O, as you might have predicted, is open type. So go ahead and choose an open type. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with Javanese because that's the one I chose last time. And actually, this is deliberately a bad choice because I'm gonna click on the the text box, and you'll notice as I well let me deselect it. Okay, now let me select it. You notice this little O oh, popped up sort of close to the lower right hand corner of the text box. Uh, I'm gonna if you hover over it, you're gonna see a, a little uh, tooltip menu pops up that says uh, click to explore more type options. So I'm going to click on, click on that, but this one says open type properties are not applicable. So uh, for whatever reason, the designer of this particular font, and actually a lot of them in your in your fonts menu, chose to not really put those into use. Those these, all these extra options I'm trying to get at. So I uh, found one that has a, like a some really exaggerated <laughs> um, open type features. It's called Feathery, and I believe it I believe it came from. Uh, default on on your um, InDesign. So I'm going to choose Feathery. And you'll notice it changed it, right? So I'm going to use my selector tool. Select the box. Actually, it was already selected anyway. I'm going to click that O, and a little menu pops up. Uh, and it says Set 1. So this means we can change to sort of a variation of the font. So I'm going to hit click Set 1 and look uh, at this it highlights certain parts of it and you'll notice it actually kind of overflows now i can click off that and go back to normal and it highlighted the part of the font it changed see so i'll click set one again and you'll notice it that it added these little leaves on the o and it highlighted the o highlighted the o again looks like it added stuff to the v the e the r <laughs> this is you know, a pretty extreme example of like a really flowery decorative uh, font. But good example though. And now it's, and I went back to normal and it highlighted the parts that went back to normal. And so you can also uh, just do this effect on certain parts. So actually I wonder if B will let me tone down that B. Oh yeah, well, okay, great. So I, I didn't like the way that B was super flowery right in the middle of the word, uh, right in the middle of the word. So I just highlighted the B and a little menu popped up in the lower right hand corner of my highlighted area and just kind of gives me the option of a, of a more normal looking B. And let's say if I don't like uh, how far apart this T and the O are, I could kind of get rid of the leaves on the T so it brings those closer. Um, and so that way, or I don't know, I wonder if Y has another variation. Oh yeah, that's good. Lots of variations on this one. Oh, but the O does not. So you'll notice I highlighted O, had the little O icon, I clicked it, open type property is not available. It's not available for that one. It only gives you that choice for the O. So that's what that's about. Anyway, that is how you use an, an open type font.